Okay, so I've shown you how to make a height map in a 3D program like Blender. I've shown you how to make a, two, a height map in a 2D program like the GIMP. And now I'm going to show you how to create a height map in Unity 3D, this game engine that I'm sure most of you are familiar with. Um, I'm just going to go right into it and I'm just going to create a new terrain. It's under a game object, object uh, create other, and terrain. And I'm just going to double click on it to zoom to it. Okay, and right away, I'm just right quick. I'm just going to set up a uh, few things to make it a little easier to see. Just going to, just going to put a sky box. Uh, I probably want to hear a little. Yeah, let's try this one. Oh, that's going to be harder to look. I'm trying to get something that's not so gray. Uh, that, that'll work. Okay. I'm going to add a directional light. I'm going to make it eight. To yeah, bring that down a little bit to yellow. I'm gonna move this out the way so it's not in our way while we're while we're scoping the terrain. Now I'm going to make the terrain a little easier to see by putting a texture to it. Add texture, and I'm gonna just put a dirt texture. I can find it. There we go. Add it. And that'll make it a little easier to see as we're sculpting. Okay, now I'm just going to run through just tools right quick. There's only there's only three main tools here. There's the uh, raise and lower terrain, in which you can uh, raise the terrain, and by holding shift you lower it. Um, by the way, I'm using a Wacom tablet. I'm not using a mouse on this one, but um, you can easily you can use a mouse. I find that, that for this situation, this is a situation where a stylus comes in handy. Uh, let's see. There's the paint height, in which you will you can set a uh, height, a set height, and here's a 117. And once you hit that 117, uh, that height, wherever you set it here, will start to flatten out. Now this is very useful for creating, you know, a range of uh, flat top surfaces, canyons and whatnot. I'm going to lower that and I'm going to lower the brush size a little. I think I may even lower the opacity. And all the brushes have brush sizes and opacities. Um, in fact, I, I kind of wish they would um, make the opacity a little higher than 100. Uh, I find it to be a bit on the uh, bit on the weak side. It kind of makes your work a little a little tedious. But that's okay. It's, it's more than sufficient to get the job done. And I'm not going to be too fancy with this here. I'm just trying to make a enough of an example to preview. Okay, and now I'm going to just blur it a little bit, just smooth it out. I will increase the intensity and strength here. And one thing about painting terrains in uh, Unity is that there is you can't paint below the ground level, which is one thing I find is a limit um, with the terrain system. Like for instance, since I, if I hold Shift and, and paint, I'll lower other other parts of raised terrain. I can't lower the terrain itself, the, the ground level, lower than ground level, which is one reason why I kept the I prefer to keep my height maps. With a, the ground level defined with a gray, um, gray value rather than a black value, because if you if, if you use a black value and you you're just gonna have a very tall terrain when you put it into the um, Unity game engine. So I prefer to uh, I prefer to just uh, I actually prefer to use a uh, mesh terrain most times. Um, I like the Unity uh, terrain system, but I find it to be to be a, a bit too limiting. For, for many situations where, especially if you're using like for a mobile game, um, is is far more easier. It's far easier on your graphics um, to use a mesh terrain. And not only that, though, but I, I find that it's much easier to manipulate a, a, a mesh terrain. But there are advantages to using the terrain system in Unity, such as uh, it is uh, it is relatively 
quick to uh, to set up once you once you have your terrain made the way you like it to have you can you can texture it very easily you can add details such as trees and grass and other things like that it is it does have its advantages but I just find that for most uses uh, I prefer to use a mesh terrain okay I'm gonna go to I'm going, to go, I'm going here to terrain settings I'm going down there here's where you could do all your tweaking uh, one thing to note and this is I should probably should have done it ahead of time is, uh, um, when you change the terrain settings um, like the height map or the detail or splat map information it erases what you do so be sure to set your resolution first as you'll see here yeah it kind of erased it but just be sure to erase to to set that first Another thing to note is that Unity Game Engine, in particular, it uses the Power of Two Plus One system. And if you remember what I showed in that list, here's the standard Power of Two resolutions, well, common to many people. And here's the Power of Two Plus One. Um, for this instance, I use 2049. But for a standard texture, to detail resolution, texture, the detail textures, uh, they use the Power of Two, just as the regular Power of Two. So I'm just going to, since I inadvertently erased my terrain, I'm just going to quickly paint another one. And I'll just pause this and return when I'm finished with something workable. Okay, so I have an example here. Not a, not a pretty example, but it's, it's enough to get the job done. Okay, now I'm going to export this. Let's go over to terrain settings again. And here's the section where you will you can import raw um, files or export them. So I'm going to export this. Now this is important. You want to keep it again. You want to make sure this is 16-bit. You don't want 8-bit. As I explained before, that will lead to banding and uh, other kind of uh, artifact issues due to the lost information. So you want to retain as much of that information with 16-bit. And you want to choose your byte order. I'm using a Windows, so I'm using using Windows by door. Export. And I already made a copy them and override it. Yes. And there we have it. Now um, there's a program you can use to um, to serve to pre preview your um, height maps in RAW. And I think uh, I should explain um, the RAW format. Um, it's not. There isn't any free programs out there. I mean, like uh, like 2D image manipulation programs that allow you to edit uh, raw files. Um, Photoshop is pretty much the only one out there that does that. But there are a few alternatives out there that do read the file format. Uh, here's one. Uh, I'm open the file. We open it and um, we create it in Unity. And everything's everything's good here. And yeah, here we go. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna explain how to use this program. This, I'm just showcasing this program here. But here you can see the program. And it's a very good way to, to see your results. Very good way to uh, to check out things, and you can alter your your train somewhat in this program. Uh, I should explain a little bit about this program. This program is Ter Terra Sculptor, Sculptor Pro. <laughs> Terra Sculptor Pro. That's a that's a program. It's a. It's currently a free program. It's in beta right now, and um, it's it's getting ready to go into commercial. I guess within the next year or so. But for now, it's free. Uh, you can use it, and uh, it won't expire until July first, two thousand fourteen. Um, I'll have the information below in the uh, in the uh, description in the video. But um, it's a very good way to import. What I use this program mostly for is for importing it and exporting it inside. Uh, into different formats. So, like here, you have the uh, different various programs here. I mean, the various file, file formats. Just pre even the uh, even the G16 height map, which is used in uh, UDK and Unreal Engine, which is very handy. I highly recommend using this program in your workflow, whether it's for games or for animation. But um, but in terms of actual editing tool, there is another program that I do use. And I'm going to showcase that here, and it is L the L3DT, which stands for Large 3D Terrain. Um, there is a uh, 
there is a, a free version of this software, standard version. It, uh, you can use it. You can even use it for commercial use. Um, it has some limits. It has a lot of limits, but it's very, it's very generous for what it, for what it is, and it allows you to import um, height maps up to 2049, which for most, for many people, that should be plenty enough. Um, here, here's the uh, website for the TerraScopter Pro. There we go. That's enough. Of, uh, okay, now I'm going to go to to file import height field. And I'm going to choose our Unity height map. And again, we want to keep in mind the scale. I'm not going to use the, the original scale I used before because I think the 20, 20 uh, kilometers is going to be a little bit too big. So I'm just going to put in. Um, I'm just going to put in two. It won't matter because in the end, because we'll be able to scale the uh, scale the height map inside our program in Unity. I am going to keep the 500 meters high altitude. Keep in mind that minimal altitude of zero is ground level, and the maximum, obviously, is, is maximum. Okay, we need to input the uh, size of the uh, pixel resolution, 2049 by 2049. Okay, and you should see in a few seconds, there is our terrain. Now, when it comes to, uh, well, again, when I use this program a lot for, I use it for surveying the, um, the terrain on ground level, and but also for its height field um, tools. I'm going to try to zoom out here. Oops. Okay, there we go. I forgot the controls for a second. Okay, I'm using the uh, WASD keys to move around, and I'm using the um, right mouse button to pan my view. Uh, so the scroll wheel will zoom, will um, increase and decrease the size of your brush. And if you want to you want to use a space bar, just to, uh, switch between walk and hover. Or walk, but I'm at the ground level, so I want to raise it. So I can use E to raise it, or R to lower it. I'm going to raise it in the air for a second. And uh, don't mind the disappearing um, get terrain, it's just clipping it for efficiency, for program efficiency. Now I'm going to begin just just touching it up here and there. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here. I don't want this to be too long, but just give you an idea of some of the things you can do. You can, you can begin to alter the terrain, you can smooth it. I use a smoothing brush most of all, uh, smoothing, smoothing and the uh, leveler. Those are probably my two most frequent tools in this uh, program. I'm going to do, use a bulldozer and kind of show off its little uh, its capabilities. I'll bring it over. We've got this little plane that shows you this the angle that you're going to have. There we go. That's that's, that's not too bad. I'm going to use a leveler. I'm going to level. This height over here, just level it out a little more. And we're we'll use a bulldozer again to. Yeah, I don't want to be too fancy with this. This is just a like, just a crude, very crude example. Um, making a mess of it now, but. Just to give you a general idea, and I'm just gonna smooth this out. Now I'm going to let that be the end of my editing. Okay, and I have a little ramp I can walk up. I'm gonna hit space bar, and I like this program because it gives you a little green little man here. Uh, he's he's six feet tall or two meters tall, so he's a real world size. And it's really, I like this program because it's really one of the only programs out there that gives you a sense of scale. I find that so many programs make a mistake, uh, terrain generation programs, they don't have anything to really indicate, you know, give you a sense of scale when you make these, these terrains. But uh, this program does. And it's, it's a very, very intelligently designed program. Very useful. But um, this is how it will look maybe in a, in a um, game environment here. 
or animation, depending on what you're using it for. But um, that's enough with exploring this. I'm going to exit here, and I'm just going to update my changes, which I've made over here. I believe that's where I made the changes. And now there are other tools and stuff. I, I won't cover it. That's not the scope of this video, but I will um, export. And you choose your export. I'm going to use R16. R16 is uh, a little better than R, the regular RAW, which I'm not. I'm not sure, but I, I believe that's just 8 bit here. Okay, it can be 16 bit, I guess. But I, I still find the RAW 16 to be a better, better choice. And now I'm going to choose this, which I created earlier. Just override it. And one thing about Unity, maybe some of you may not know this, but it can import R16 uh, files. Okay, I hit OK. Let's go over like that. I'm also going to export a version in Ping so that if I want to edit this height map inside of um, uh, GIMP or, or Photoshop or any other 2D program, I can do so. So I'm going to choose that, overwrite it, yes. And there we go. I don't need this program anymore, so I can just exit. And I'm going to open Unity again. I'm going to hit import. There's our. Oh well, we don't have we don't see the uh, the R16 file we imported, and that's because you have to switch it from raw to all files. And you should see it there. And Unity will read that. So Big 16. Size, you want to make sure the byte order is, is appropriate for you. And there we go, choose import. Now, I'm, just, I'm using different um, dimensions here, so it's, it's going to be a little larger than I had it. In fact, I may just uh, I may just scale that down a little more sensible size. There we go. Okay, and just to test our terrain right quick, I'm going to put in first. This first person controller is included um, with Blender. Just make sure you've imported it, import it into your project. Another thing you want to do, you want to make sure that this is not in the ground, or you want to make sure the whole thing is above ground, otherwise, it's going to fall through. I'm, for this purpose, I'm, I'm going to increase the size, the uh, speeds of the movement, and I'm going to increase the jump a little bit. I find it a little bit too slow and limited. And now, when I play, we have our terrain. Uh, okay, this thing is mud ugly, but you still you get an idea idea of uh, just the kind of thing you can do with this using this workflow. I'm just I'm just showing you a workflow here. But uh, with, with some work though, you can make this a very nice terrain. But that's all for this video, and I hope you enjoyed these uh, videos covering how to create height maps.